Welcome everybody to the Daily Space Weather. I'm your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash mash Today we're talking about coronal mass ejection fully releasing the politicization of everything. And COVID-19... First, let's talk about the sun. You see a sunspot has just formed over here. Will it have umber long enough to be named Sunspot 2767? Well, we'll have to keep an eye on it to figure that out. Also, a small active region in the southeast, around where my pointer is. Let's look at some more stuff. Here's that coronal mass ejection that we covered twice yesterday. We had to do a second video about it it hadn't fully released and indeed even after the second video it hadn't fully released now it's pretty much fully released and we can start analyzing getting a better idea of where it's headed is it headed to your backyard well we'll attempt to analyze once again here's the data from the lasco c2 so this pane here this is from stereo a a spacecraft at Lagrange point five. This spacecraft is at Lagrange point one between the Earth and the Sun. Lagrange points are places where spacecraft can maintain their orbital position with respect to the Earth without very much thruster input. There's one behind the Earth and on the other side of the Sun from the Earth. That's Lagrange point two. Lagrange point three is at where Stereo B is located, and Lagrange point four is on the opposite side where people think Nibiru is located. So here's the Lasco C3, and we've got some custom videos of this also, the one day, the one day video complete with the sun in the middle. So here we are at Helio Viewer, and we've added a layer because of the recent events. Let's take a look at what we usually look at. Here are the magnetic fields, and again, you can see that sunspot. If it's named, it'll be 2767. And there's a 304 angstroms view. Decent sized filament in the southwest, uh, southeast, rather. And let's look at some custom. Here's a custom view complete with Earth scale. Allow me to vanish. Shut it. There you have that. Little active region there, very close to the pole also that popped up for a minute. Right in that area. Another sign of the sun ramping back up into solar maximum. Here's sunspot 2767. And they need to have umbra for about 12 hours. This may be too close to setting as the umbrae have to be visible from Earth in order to be classified into the basic sunspot classification since people have been counting sunspots for a long time, hundreds of years, in fact. And lastly, we've got a big composite view here, complete with the rotating sun and the Lasco C3. I like that one. Let us know what you think of that in the comments. We may have to feature this in the future. And here are the custom videos we made yesterday. I'll just get rid of that. And please bear with me one moment. We are streaming live to Twitch. And we're just waiting for the real-time solar wind to load here. Well, let's check out what's going on with the real-time solar wind. We see some shifts in the BTBZ as well as the phi angle over the past six hours. And we see the solar wind density dropping off here in the last hour. Now down to 2.4 protons per cubic centimeter, solar wind speed 331 kilometers a second, 
Phi angle looks like it's climbing. It's up to 127 degrees. And the KP index is at 1, having been there for most of the past 24 hours. Next, we'll look at the Geospace Magnetosphere movies to show a pretty weak magnetosphere. Not a lot of pressure, but the electrons have returned. And it looks like there's a, a second Van Allen belt trying to form in, in this equatorial plane view. And we'll let that play through to once again archive four hours of data, courtesy University of Michigan. Next, we're going to look at ground geospace magnetic perturbations. Allow me to reappear. Ta-da! And we encourage everybody to leave a comment. It looks like we have some magnetism. Let's see what's going on. Here are the ground magnetic perturbations. And you can see some over the North Canadian Pole. Less so over the North Siberian geomagnetic pole. And once again, indications that the South Pole has crept into the Southern Indian Ocean. If you weren't aware, well, it's called a polar excursion where the geomagnetism goes kind of haywire. Speaking of going haywire, our funding is drying up. So please consider becoming a patron or donating in other ways. Thanks to our one-time donor who donated yesterday. We appreciate that. Thanks to our people editing our editing your pledges on Patreon in the upward fashion. <laughs> and thanks to our patrons for being assistant and associate producers of the content. Our real source of funding is Patreon. And our video yesterday got over 100 views on YouTube. Oh my God, we're also on Subscribestar. So please visit the links below the videos and support us in whatever way you're able to do. Look for an Amazon affiliate coming soon. And again, we are streaming live to Twitch. It's in case you're wondering, it's twitch.tv slash smash mash If you haven't subscribed over there and you want to see the content immediately, well, that's the place to do it. Again, streaming live. Later, we'll upload the video to YouTube and to BitChute. Please don't forget to press like and subscribe in those places. And we are trending, apparently, on the BitChute science section as we see hundreds of videos hundreds of views per day. So, great success over there at BitChute. And welcome to the daily Smash Lights section where we talk about whatever we want. First, we're going to talk about Comet Neowise. It's sizzling as it slides past the sun. Will it break up? Will it continue to brighten? What do you think will happen? It cruised inside Mercury's orbit on July 3rd. It's now got a large tail. And there you can see Comet Neo eyes from the International Space Station, courtesy astronaut Bob Benkin. Well done, Bob. Anyway, we're citing once again that this is uh, now visible to the naked eye. And by the way, if you're wondering what we're listening to, I'm about to shut it off. It's soundclick.com slash goldencatproductions. This track's called Blacksmith. And you can download it for 99 cents. Amazing, that gem cutter's been up to 40 in the charts overall. And molybdenum 99's been all the way up to 36. Shout out to Smash Staff, the person for whom that track is named. My living girlfriend, Christy. It's her nickname. Let's talk about Chad and scare. Oh my God, that is some scary, freaking spooky stuff. <sighs> what what can I do this time? Let's break out the stainless steel pen once again. You, I've to quote Captain Kirk, I've had enough of Chad. I said. There we go. Please, please crush like bug. 
turns out a new oste uh, an osteoporosis drug may have potential for treating COVID-19, according to a supercomputer. Let's hope these models are better than CO2-based climate models. What do you say? It's Excalate 4 Cove project, an already registered drug, the best possible thing for little wimpy viruses like COVID-19 is to have a cure for them like raloxifene. So once again, announcing some positive news about it. By the way, it's still not particularly dangerous for healthy people. Something that I've been saying since January 23rd when smashomash.com slash forum started covering it. Let's hope the potential is good. Let's talk about brainwashing. Doug Casey knows what he's talking about. Hysteria is the problem, not the flu, not COVID-19. What's scary is people doing incredibly stupid and irresponsible things. This is hysteria comparable to the witch trials of the late 17th century. I would concur. Let's play a clip from his op-ed. Really about the safest place to be today. Uh, it's not at giveaway levels like it was in 2001. Anyway, I don't know what he's talking about. Perhaps check out the video. It's on zerohedge.com. The worst people, not the best, get into government. Right, Tom Wolf? Now, Tom Wolf is the governor of Pennsylvania, and Pennsylvania's top COVID idiot, another one of his COVID idiots, is former linebacker Dr. Rachel Levine. And I'm pretty sure the combined knowledge of infectious diseases with these two is similar to the dander of a cat. My goldfish seem to know more about infectious diseases than Tom Wolf. It's going to end very badly, Casey says, of the government's management of the economy. Why? Because the government shouldn't be managing the economy because it sucks at it. Now, I was going to cover some stories from NBC News and from CBS News, but I won't because their website sucks so hard I can't even find the articles I was looking for. So let's ignore NBS, NBC and CBS News, two complete leftist arms of the Democrat Party. Let's talk about, let's talk about the Nero. <laughs> hoo -ah, hoo -ah. Apparently, apparently he's been running out of De Niro. <laughs> De Niro's been running out of De Niro. So uh, I, I, I don't know why. Um, I thought he was worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Maybe he's a very irresponsible spender. That's why he keeps starring in ridiculous movies. And uh, I don't know what the point is, but New York Post, talking about De Niro, says coronavirus decimated his finances. Again, I don't know how that would be, but whatever. Now, I've survived the global pandemic. Mary survived a global pandemic. And thanks again for posting at smashamash.com slash forums. Coronavirus section. And let's talk about Fauci. Because Fauci's been talking about partisanship. And Fauci is correct. So, the partisanship is pathetic. And to all you Karens and Chads, shut your faces. If you know less about infectious diseases than my goldfish... I'm uninterested in your opinion about lockdowns and mask wearing. You're not the boss of me. How can I tell? Because your signature is not on my paychecks nor on any contract bearing my signature. Hashtag COVIDiots. Please leave a comment if you think COVIDiots will be the word of the year in 2020. Let's get Miriam Webster to add the word COVIDiots to their dictionary. Anyway, partisanship is confusing the hell out of people. As people think that you're a Trumpist because you don't want to wear masks. Well, the reason I don't want to wear masks is because it's an affront to science itself. It's utterly embarrassing to be as COVIDiotic as people who think masks for people with no symptoms are appropriate. And I just don't care. Let's talk about movie recommendations. We've started a new thread on forum. Smashomash.com slash forum in the free-for-all forum. Movie recommendations. Shout out to Amy Vesley. Please leave a comment. Please leave your movie recommendations at smashomash.com slash forum. By the way, we're all over social media, including Facebook and Twitter. And uh, Chris Martz astutely, astutely cites that now, for some reason, they're naming, they're naming Coastal Lowe's. So this is, to quote Chris, just lame. The National Hurricane Center has decided to name a low attached to a front. 
which does not even fit tropical storm criteria. It's not a tropical storm. Oh, noes, it's so hot, it's cold, and oh, noes, carbon dioxide is so spooky, and oh, noes, human emissions are causing more and more intense storms, which is untrue, by the way. Let's name every anti-cyclone. So that's, uh, that's my latest. So, yeah, let's, I think we should name this anti-cyclone here, which is, by the way, rotating counterclockwise. It's in the southern hemisphere. It's a high-pressure zone. Why don't we name that the Fauci anti-cyclone? What do you say? By the way, we're also on Instagram. And if you saw our video yesterday, we just combined these two videos and then put an image of the Lasco C3 for posterity. And here ends today's smash light section. Sorry if we don't make a clip. We're running kind of late. 10.7 centimeter radio flux is at 68. Make that 69. And now we're on the space weather enthusiast dashboard. Yeah, 69 for the daily for the 10.7 centimeter radio flux. And here's the Enlil spiral. Uh, it shows a coronal mass ejection, but I don't think this is this is going to be updated throughout the day today as that thing hadn't fully released yet. And again, here is the here's the latest in terms of the radio flux. Let's zoom in on that. There you go. There's the solar minimum that we've just come out of. Congratulations on surviving it. The GOES X-ray flux is pretty flatlined despite seeing a small sunspot group in the western area. Proton flux remains flatlined, and uh, it may remain flatlined, especially if that coronal mass ejection entirely misses the Earth, which is entirely possible. But again, there does appear to be a small Earth-facing component since we did see a halo on both sides of the coronagraph, the LASCO C2 and C3. GOES magnetometer is pretty spiky here. And no surprise, we are solidly in the North Pole current sheet, shown here in green. And you can see these variations in the amount of plasma in the corona. That affects the amount of magnetism detected around the ionosphere, where the GOES-16 is located. And we expect to remain solidly in the North Pole current sheet for at least the next 36 to 48 hours. Here's the line of sight field plot showing the B field in blue. That's the interplanetary magnetic field on which you live, and there's really nothing to comment about it. It's quite symmetrical right now. And here's the here's what's going on, okay? So here's the sun, here's the Earth. Stereo A would be out here. Stereo B would be out here. Lagrange point 3. Lagrange point 4 is here, and Lagrange point 5 is here, where stereo A is. So from the view of stereo A, what we see is something headed in this direction. But we don't know the difference between if it's headed in this direction... Or in this direction. See what I'm saying? And this is why we have to use the LASCO located here at Lagrange point one as well as stereo A to look at from this perspective as well as from this perspective to give us the best idea of the speed and location of that coronal mass ejection. Now to me it looked like most of it went like this And some of it also went like this. Now, it's diffuse. And uh, NASA's reporting that it's very slow moving. So it's probably going to take about three days to arrive on the 12th or 13th, perhaps. And I'm not really expecting a very big hit at all. I'm expecting a KP of 3 from it. You should see a little spike in the solar wind data. And I'll show you what these typically look like, a small weak diffuse coronal mass ejection look like typically what you'll see is you'll see a little spike in the you'll see a little spike in the density like this and a little spike in the velocity at the same time that's typically the kind of signature you'd see with a coronal mass ejection especially a small relatively weak one like this again most of it appears to be missing the earth to the west just keep in mind that's the way the earth rotates so a western a western miss is going to miss more closely than an eastern miss, as when one misses to the east, the Earth is moving away from it. Hope that makes sense. Let's move on to see what's going on above my head. It's civil twilight. 
Hopefully you're not experiencing civil unrest where you are because of complete covid -iots. And if you get up before dawn, you should see quite a pile up. You can see Mercury, Venus, Mars, the Moon, Saturn, and Jupiter all in the same sky. So eyes on the ecliptic if you've got a low horizon. Leave a comment. Leave a photo. Let us know. We'll feature it on the channel. We've got some electrons back. There's the one-year graph of electron flux. Here's the three-day graph of electron flux. We never quite reached into alert threshold levels, making it unlikely for very much satellite drag. We still do see some nighttime anomalies here around the Caribbean and South Pacific, southern Mexico, etc., northern Central America. And this will give you some idea of where your GPS errors will be located. Still fairly low levels of electron flux. Expecting to see this come up again, I wouldn't be surprised once again to see alert levels happen today. That's the whole air column, thermosphere all the way down to the ionosphere. Here's just the ionosphere layer. And we see some extreme discharge events going on there, as well as some great charge disparities happening, making it all the way to 10 megahertz on the sun-facing side, and a huge F layer shown in red. That's 1 megahertz which makes it an F layer as opposed to an F2 layer, which would be the yellow areas. Here's the latest image. And you can see that 10 megahertz zone right there and that 1 megahertz zone there. A bit of a large charge disparity in the ionosphere right now. Looking at earthquakes over the past 24, we don't see very many, although here's a very shallow quake at Hawaii. It's a 3.1 magnitude, one of the largest we've seen for a while here and it's directly under the Mauna Loa caldera. Now we've seen a lot of activity right in this region here over the past weeks and months. More magmatic activity, that earthquake happening at 600 meters above sea level, a negative depth. Negative depth, it's almost like negative distance and negative temperature, right? No, just kidding folks, it means above sea level. Here's a deep quake at Timor-Leste, once again, a series of deep quakes happening there. This one's a 4.6 at 245 kilometers. Deep quake in Indonesia. To the east of where that last one was located, that one came in at 17.01 universal time last night. And let's scroll up the list. We don't want the video to be too long. Basically a lull in earthquakes. If you're in an earthquake-prone zone, have a plan. Know which building facades may collapse. Have a bug-out bag. Try to be an asset, not a liability in the event of a disaster. Looking at uh, volcanoes, we see Katavar back on the list, 6,000 foot plume there. Sangay, flight level 20,000 there as it explodes in Sabankaya. Intermittent puff emissions are producing. A 27,000 foot ash plume as it also explodes. Please do not attempt to do a back handspring or tightrope walk over the caldera. Now you're going to hear lots of stories about the Saharan dust. Here's a real time map of it. And thanks to nullschool.net for having such a fantastic website. Let's get back to what we normally look at, the jet streams. So there are the jet streams of the west. Extreme meridional jet stream flow dominating the northern hemisphere and very concentrated jet streams dominating the south. There's a 254 kilometer per hour section of jet stream off the east coast of South America. Here's the eastern world's jets. And again, extreme meridional jet stream flow seen all over the Northern Hemisphere. Check it out. That is a hardly coherent jet stream. Next, we'll look at some pressure maps. Here's windy.com. <clears throat> and we're letting this advance. This is the GFS forecast. And we'll pause this at about 12 noon tomorrow, my time. For you new viewers out there, I'm located in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. Please leave us a comment. Let us know where you're located especially if you've never left us a comment before. I'm pretty bad with names, and knowing locations helps me to remember who people are. Next, looking at lightning maps, and we see significant lightning over the U.S., as well as northern Europe. Chattanooga. Nashville, there's thunder and lightning to your east. What else do we have? Here's the most concentrated storm it looks like. 
Hey, Wichita, you might be in the crosshairs. There is thunder rolling in. Dag. You see all those strikes? Yowzers. Check out lightningmaps.org the next time you hear thunder. Freak out your foes and impress your friends by forecasting thunder. Tell them that you're Thor or perhaps Odin. Here is the uh, water vapor maps for Europe and Africa. Some very dry air over northern Africa. Water vapor maps for the Far East and Oceania. Water vapor map for the Western world, the Americas. We want to name this anticyclone the Fauci Anticyclone. What do you say? Shout out to Chris Martz. Here's the cloud layer. Since it's dark, we use the NASA GOES shortwave satellite. And I would note right here, there is a spaceship. Please tell Mr. MBB333 and Gina Maria Colbert, whatever her name is. Make sure you inform them that there's a spaceship there. Could be a Borg drone, a, a, a Borg cube. We're not exactly sure. Keep in mind the resolution is two kilometers on this. And uh, let's zoom in on that area over the Arkansas-Louisiana Arkansas border. See if we can see a close-up of that spaceship. Oh my God, it's a spaceship. There it is, folks. Oh, my God. It's got to be a spaceship. Or maybe it's Harp. Or maybe it's maybe it's a chemtrail. Ooh, I'm scared and spooked. Maybe it's seeding Arkansas and Louisiana with, with, with COVID. Or maybe it's a, maybe it's a 5G. And it shows up on the water vapor map too, folks, but in a different place. And there you can see once again, oh my God, it's something very scary and spooky. Holy criminy. There it is. Oh my God. I'm sure it's not a cosmic ray or anything like that. <laughs> uh, okay. So yeah, let's, let's go back to that. And we're going to zoom in on the area around Kansas. Actually, let's check out this low off the coast of Delaware. It looks more interesting, and it affects me directly. So for once, I'm going to do some weather forecasting for myself and not step outside and go, what is going on out here? Which happens to me all the time, by the way, as a result of me making these videos. Anyway, there's what's going on with that coastal low, which I believe has been named Tropical Storm Lulls. Tropical Storm Lulls, which is not even a tropical storm. Here's the U.S. Doppler radar. A long band of storms there, right on the coast of uh, Lake Michigan. And let's check out these strong storms over Kansas, as they're producing a ridiculous amount of, uh, of lightning right now. And there you see those. Nothing too exciting going on there. And thanks, Smash Team, for tuning in. Please leave us a comment. Share on your social media. Be part of the Smash Team. Tell your friends. Tell your foes. Tell your science noobs. Tell your science pros to fly American Smashways. And thanks for flying American Smashways. Please keep your head and arms inside the Smash Plane at all times, as we have bonus features. Sunspot 2767. It looks like it's beta class, as I see two distinct umbrae. Let's check the magnetism. And we do see two separate umbrae there. Uh, let's see, that one's north. That is a cycle 24 sunspot, folks, as the leading polarity here is south pole, and this is north of the equator, making that a cycle 24 sunspot. Last but not least, let's check out the 335 angstroms for once. We don't view this all that often. 
and we'll just allow that to load here. That's a 48 hour video. It's from the SDO. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, stare at the sun, don't drink, and if you do, don't drive. And since it'll never be now again, may that solar wind be at your back. And may that neo-renaissance be kind to your heart.